Courtney. Okay, awesome, awesome. We're living the gluten-free life. Um, if you go to livingwithelevation.com slash resources, there is the complete guide to the gluten-free diet on there. It's like 38 pages long, has a ton. It has a lot, a lot of information. And that's actually what we're going to be going over today. Um, but you guys just get this little handout because I wasn't printing out that much paper <laughs> for anybody. Um, for those of you online, just download it. And you, know, you can follow along with it. Um, so what is gluten? This is a big keyword right now. And gluten is basically a piece of grains, certain grains. Um, and right now, you know, we're seeing a, an uptick in like celiacs. A lot of people are going gluten-free and finding great results. Um, it is an inflammatory component. Um, but like for me, I am actually, I need to go wheat-free. So if something says gluten-free, I more than likely can't eat it if it still has wheat in it because a lot of the times now what they're doing because there's so much money involved in eating gluten-free is, you know, on the front, they paid, you know, the thousands of dollars to learn that or millions of dollars to learn that if it says gluten-free, you'll buy it and you flip it around and it'll say all these different wheat products because they are going into the lab, they are taking the wheat and they're extracting the gluten out of it. Now you might feel somewhat better with that gone. But in my case, in like my line of work, I actually see more wheat sensitivities than actual gluten. So it's the whole, like for me, I can eat small amounts of wheat without the gluten, but it still affects me pretty good. So really pay attention to those key marketing words on the front. If you're trying to eat gluten-free, um, now if you don't care, you know, if all you want is the gluten gone, then it'll say gluten-free up front. But if you're trying to eat more healthier, make sure when you see the gluten-free on the front of the package that you flip it over and make sure that there's not any wheat products in there. Um, so that's my little tip of the day for the gluten. Um, now for this, in this guide, and I'm just going to kind of go about, so celiac disease is when um, the body has been damaged so much, like so much from gluten, especially, okay. Um, and there is, I have yet to see somebody come back from that. Okay. Most of the time when we're sensitive to something, you know, everyone in this room knows that we can remove it for a while, do some enzyme therapy and we can introduce it back in and it's not as painful. Um, with, once you have celiacs, my interpretation of this is you've done permanent damage and there's just no coming back from it. And um, people who do have celiacs, I mean, this is like, they can have the smallest amount, like just trace amounts and it can literally wreck their body. Um, and which is where, if you have like a weed sensitivity, if you don't address it, it can develop into something as serious as celiac disease. So the way I look at it is like, let's just get rid of the weed. There's tons, we live in this day and age, we're in 2023 now, um, here in Rollins, Wyoming, there is so many options out there. When I first started doing this, like, no, there wasn't anything here. I had to drive like to Cheyenne or Fort Collins or, you know, order it online and everything. But even like now locally, um, just this last weekend, right? The cassava chips, like I can't do corn and we found cassava corn chips. Like they were delicious. <laughs> like Rollins, even here in Rollins, there's so many, so many options here um, for us. So gluten-free, it's a marketing term. It's like sugar-free, fat-free, all the, you know, they spend millions and millions and millions of dollars to learn what you're going to buy. So, I mean, like, I think it was Skittles or something like a Starburst, maybe it's Starburst. When I saw gluten-free on Starburst, and I'm like, well, of course it's gluten-free. Like there's no grains in a Starburst, but people buy it now thinking that it's healthy. I'm not kidding you. I know somebody who lives on um, it's either Skittles or Starburst and Fritos that has celiacs and thinks that they're actually like treating themselves good. Um, the only time that you're going to be concerned about that gluten free is if it's some kind of a grain. Now, a lot of like chips say that because a lot of people don't realize like corn is a grain and you know, you can have corn chips if you have to eat gluten free. Um, but Let's see who should follow this diet. Oh, like celiac disease. By the way, this is just a little thing that was on here that celiac disease affects approximately 1% of the global population. I know a lot of people who have celiacs. 
So 1% seems pretty small to me, but I also don't know when they made this. Um, when we're eating things like greens, especially uh, processed greens, okay, which is like anytime you have like a flour, you know? Um, so like, I don't care if it says whole wheat, I don't care if it says what it says, if it is ground up into a pasty white flour, it is processed and it will mess with your digestive system, period. Okay, it creates, especially wheat. Remember making the paper machines? Did we all make paper machines? Remember how hard those would get? It was like glue and then it's like cement. Well, we're eating that and that's literally what's happening to our intestines. And we have these little villi that are supposed to like absorb all the nutrients and you know get all the good stuff from our food. And we just like literally just create this glue layer over them and this is actually how we do the permanent damage um i know we're talking about gluten-free and this has isn't a gluten-free thing this is where i see a lot of wheat free <laughs> now sprouted grain bread like ezekiel bread is completely different it is the whole wheat germ like it's the whole thing and most people unless you have done the permanent damage against gluten can eat that just fine and get all the nutrients from it it's not processed we have it here at city markets in the freezer aisle um, cinnamon raisin, by the way, if anybody is very excited when they start carrying that, <laughs> <laughs> I, I shouldn't eat wheat, but it was delicious and I ate an entire loaf in like one week. So, uh, some of the other things that can, um, that can affect this is it just has a list like Addison's disease, autoimmune thyroid diseases, like Hashimoto's, Graves. Um, type 1 diabetes, dermatitis, herpetiformis, psoriasis, rheumatoid arthritis, systemic lupus. Um, we'll probably do really well. I'm honestly like, I'm like, give it a try. Try for 30 days. Give up, give up wheat and see how big of a difference it makes for you. Um, huge. Oh, they do talk about wheat allergy in here. I did not go through this guide, by the way. <laughs> We're just going through it right now. Um, oh, wow, they have this like handy dandy chart in here. Yeah, y'all need to just download this book. It's got like all kinds of different symptoms for celiac disease. I'm just gonna go through celiac disease. Symptoms, abdominal pain, bloating or gas, missed menstrual period, severe like anaphylaxis, so the severe allergic reaction, anxiety or depression, bruising, constipation, decreased appetite, delayed growth or puberty in children and adolescents, diarrhea, fatigue, foul smelling and oily stools, hair loss, headache, indigestion, itchy skin rash or hives, joint and muscle pain, mouth ulcers, nausea and or vomiting, nosebleeds, numbness and or tingling in the hands and feet, nutritional deficiencies due to malabsorption, Unexplained weight loss. Okay, that was it. Wow, that's like everybody I know. <laughs> that was just for celiac disease. They do have a gluten sensitivity check that you can go through. So um, if you're not sure, um, it you if you're having abdominal pain, bloating or gas, anxiety or depression, constipation or diarrhea, fatigue, headache, itchy skin rash or hives, nausea and or vomiting those are signs of gluten sensitivity and then they have like two three things checked for a wheat allergy and i'm gonna tell you right now like most of these happen to me when i eat wheat so i'm not gonna go over that one <laughs> so following the gluten-free diet this is what everybody wants to know this is like the, the cream right how do we do this um there's a list of apps that are available for you if you really like want to go out of town and like you're unsure, but here's how I do it. Um, meat and vegetables. You go out of town, go to a restaurant, like everyone's like, I don't know what to eat when I travel. Get you a steak, get you a side salad, get you a baked potato, <laughs> all of that. Now the dressings might be a little tricky, sometimes not very often, but sometimes, um, you know, they do put flowers and dressings very rare but some people do um also another one that I learned the hard way was IHOP puts pancake batter in their omelets yes um and it was very painful <laughs> and so now like if I go out to eat and I want an omelet I ask them do you add anything to your eggs 
and actually it's really common because it fluffs them up all night. Um, it's a cheap way to give you more food. So pay attention to stuff like that. And you can always ask, like I've had people bring me boxes, you know, up with like the ingredients on it and stuff so I can read it. People are really sensitive now to gluten. So it's becoming more common that, you know, you can ask for like a lot of times, like the chains and stuff will have like little symbols, gluten-free, gluten-free, you know, so, you know, you're safe with those things, but in all actuality, a steak, baked potato with some butter and sour cream and a, a salad or a side of, you know, broccoli or whatever, you're, you're good. It's not, it's not hard, you know, to really figure that one out. Um, if you're going to people's houses, this is why I tell what I tell my clients, just tell them you have, that you're allergic to wheat. Don't say you eat gluten-free because then they're like, oh, you're fancy. Um, <laughs> just tell them you're allergic to wheat and people will respond a lot differently. You know, for me, it's very painful. I will be rude. <laughs> like don't try to force it down my throat I'm the one that deals with the pain not you I am not eating it you know but not everybody we like to be nice and friendly right <laughs> you know so if like you're if people are giving you some pushback like you know just tell me allergic tweet don't even use the gluten-free because then they think you're fancy <laughs> <laughs> so other sources um of gluten um alcohol and i'm talking like anything you know that's like got barley and hops you know so like beers um malt beverages you know but you could do things like vodka um whiskeys um seltzers stuff like that you can do those um art supplies this was fascinating to me play-doh contains wheat <laughs> so Huh? Yeah, but how do you tell a kid not to eat Play-Doh? <laughs> I mean, we made a lot of homemade when the kids were little. I was too broke to make real Play-Doh or like buy real Play-Doh. So we did, so my kids are lucky. Um, Cream-based soups. Um, we were just talking in chili earlier. You know, um, my husband, you know, they use flour for his chili recipes and stuff um and so when we made this transition we played around a lot with different flowers and we tried like barley flour and like millet flour and um, almond flour and what we found worked really good for us is cassava flour um but a lot of soups and chilies and stuff do they use um flour in their chilies as soup class okay yeah, so look, really pay attention to like the group. Now, if you do like a broth based soup, you know, you're pretty much good. You know, it's just like a broth base. Um, but they use flour to like thicken it up. So you're going to want to ask, like, what kind of flour did you use? Um, and then if you're making it at home, play around with it. You know, almond flour doesn't really work like flour, you know, but there's some things that I can substitute almond flour and it tastes good. Um, but I like cassava, that's been our new one. It's becoming easier for you to access here um processed meats like <laughs> who would have thought that you go get some sausage and have some <laughs> have we did you know that yeah um so now you gotta start looking at your your meats your deli meats and stuff asking you know is it gluten-free um condiments and seasonings there's a ton of wheat products and stuff like that i mean it's very 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 common so just flip it over. You're looking for anything that says wheat, right? Or if you're doing gluten-free um, and it contains wheat, they'll have it on the front that says it's gluten-free. Um, and if you don't have celiacs, like you're going to be fine if you go to a restaurant and it's made around gluten. Okay, somebody with celiacs, the smallest trace amount can cause major, major pain. So, you know, they need to be a little bit more cautious. But for like those of us, like I'm not like, does it, is it made in a gluten-free facility? Because to me, it doesn't matter if there's a small amount, you know, um, because my body won't respond as bad. So, you know, kind of measure that for yourself. Other hidden sources, breadcrumbs. We know that brewer's yeast. There was a lot of words. I had no idea what half these were. Um, like einkorn. I'm not the only one here that doesn't have a clue what iron corn is. <laughs> um, anything that says wheat, literally anything that says wheat. Um, 
vegetable protein. That was an interesting one for me. Like, who would have thought vegetable protein would be? It's snuck in everywhere. It's like soy and, you know, sugar. Literally, it's in everything. Um, some of my favorite brands um, I wanted to share with you guys. Um, Y'all know I do Epicare, right? 100% gluten-free. Um, and so, like, I love Epicare because I don't have to worry about anything. And they have a lot of, like, pastries, you know, like brownies and, and uh, like, cupcakes and, you know, like, doughy, like, banana sweet bread, stuff like that, okay? Um, and when you're making, oh, I want to throw this out there because this is important. It's not on this sheet, so remember this. If you are making gluten-free breads or anything like that, you always let it sit for 30 minutes before you cook it. It actually sets up better. We had this conversation where, you know, um, she, one of my favorite brands of pancake mix, and she's like, yeah, they don't quite turn out. And that's when we were talking. I was like, well, I let mine sit for 30 minutes before I do it. And she was like, oh. I didn't know that. I mean, you, you don't have to, but it will actually cook better if you let it sit for 30 minutes before you throw it in. Yeah. So to make a note of that, it's not on here. I should have thrown it on here, but I didn't think about it. Um, another one of my favorite brands is Simple Mills. And we got some great crackers at City Market. I don't know if they carry at Walmart. Um, they have cheese ones and then they have um, sea salt ones. They also have amazing cookies like almond flour cookies, they're yummy. <laughs> um, Bee Free Foods, you have to get that online. Um, Mikey's, I love Mikey's. They have um, almond flour English muffins. I mean, it's more than that. But they have like, so I like breakfast sandwiches. <laughs> you know, and I got the little maker that you put it in and you know, you can make your little English muffin, you know, sausage McMuffin or whatever. And um, I love their muffins and you can get that here no you have to get it online um now i, I hate to say that because walmart and city market are stepping up big time and every time i go in there like i'm surprised by something new and if enough people ask there's a good possibility that they will carry it uh, <laughs> we have chosen foods um, that's a brand that really focuses on gluten-free the only chosen food that i use is their mayonnaise which should be gluten-free <laughs> um, and Pamela's products, um, like that's what we had this this summer with the graham crackers, you know, to make the s'mores and stuff with. So, um, but Pamela's products, and they we do have some of those here, some of those products. And most of the stores you typically have like a gluten free like section of the store. Um, and just because this is gluten free does not mean that stuff in that section is healthy. But if you want to cheat and not hurt. <laughs> I mean, they have Thin Mints at Walmart. <laughs> They're full of crap, but they taste like Thin Mints. And sometimes you, everybody else is getting their Girl Scout cookies. I want a Girl Scout cookie too. <laughs> but yeah, there's a lot of, um, like most stores have like a gluten-free section, things like that. So if you're looking for something, like if you're looking for like a gluten-free bread, you might have to go to a completely different section than the bread. Okay, or like the crackers are not with crackers, like the Simple Mills crackers, they're in the gluten-free aisle. So look around and see what they have. Um, gluten-free swaps, okay. So what do we do for our flour? Gosh, there's so many options out there. There's so many. Um, cassava has been one of my favorites. Now there are brown rice or like rice flours. Those work really good too. Um, there's like a blue bag. I want to see it's like crusties or something that we have here. And I think that's a brown rice flour um, that's gluten-free. Um, for breaded meats, you can swap out for baked or grilled meats. Um, if I want breading, I do a lot of Epicure's stuff. Um, I also do pork rinds. <laughs> like I bread it in pork rinds. Hey, crush my, oh, it's delicious. They're crunchy. It's got the pork flavor. <laughs> um, I can never say this, Kauskas, I have no idea. It's like a little uh, um, round, like a pasta ball, kind of ricey thing. Um, you can always substitute that for quinoa. 
um, flour tortillas. We have siete almond flour tortillas here at City Market in the freezer aisle. Um, I discovered siete makes a cassava flour one. They are good. Um, I picked it up at natural grocers in Cheyenne City Market. Uh, Doug had told me one time that they um, can carry the vendor or whatever they can get it in. So if y'all want some cassava flour tortillas, I can't be the only one asking. <laughs> we need a revolution happen here. They were really good. I was quite surprised. Um, or you could do cor corn tortillas too, instead of flour. Um, orzo is another pasta to substitute with rice. Um, and pastas, we have a lot of pastas. We have brown rice pastas, we have chickpea pastas. We even have like cauliflower pastas. We have lentil pastas, zoodles, spaghetti squash. All those are gluten-free. Um, salad dressings, like I said, some salad dressings have them. So, you know, you're, you're safe with vinaigrettes. I mean, they can't have flour in a vinaigrette. <laughs> um, soy sauce, soy sauce does have wheat in it sometimes. Um, and so, and this is something we can get locally. They sell coconut aminos and tamari that you can use as a substitute. Um, also, you're not getting like the MSG with that too. Wheat crackers, we talked about like Simple Meals has great ones here. There's a bunch of other kind of crackers, but like there's like uh, Mary's. They have the almond ones too. The nut fins and yeah. So you've got a lot of options for your crackers. Um, whole wheat bread, you can switch to like a gluten-free bread. You know, just make sure if you're going wheat-free, just make sure it's wheat-free. Um, I haven't tried really much of the uh, gluten-free breads except for the be free, which is over in the, by the deli. And those are really good. Like they have really good pitas. Um, then there's the, there's other gluten-free breads that are in the bread aisle, um, but they taste, oh, they, they're rough. <laughs> All I'm going to say. I tried to make some garlic bread out of it. <laughs> The keto bread has wheat. Yeah, it's, it's, they add, it, the way that they make keto bread is quite interesting. It's not as bad. Yeah, it's not as bad. Um, I hurt with it, but, because <laughs> I don't like wheat. Um, but the, the gluten-free breads that I tried were gross. The beef free though, like I said, they're in a the little stand by the uh, deli. Um, I haven't had their breads. Oh, I had, I've had their pizza crust and I've had their uh, pita breads. And I actually like those. And then there's like, oh, so like pizza bread. City Market stepped up their game. I'm not sure about Walmart. City Market, if you go down the pizza aisle, they got five million different kinds of things. A lot of people do like cauliflower crusts. Um, they had all kinds of different choices last time I looked. So um, also Walmart, has um it's a company called cauliflower i used to order it online it is made from cauliflower eggs and cheese like that's literally it it's not fluffy like bread it's very very flat um and they have that at walmart also um if you want to make your own pizza stuff like that that are gluten-free um so gluten-free grains are things like amaranth buckwheat corn oats quinoa um, quinoa is actually like a seed. Um, rice, sorghum, teff. I have no idea what teff is. <laughs> so, you know, but like, so when we were talking like um, about like beer, you know, barley, you can't have the barley if you're trying to go gluten free. But those are like those grains that you have, you can have. Now, this is where I'm not as big into um, on the guide that they have online where they have the components of a healthy gluten-free diet. Um, it's putting everybody in a box. Again, it's a lot of grains still. Some people do not respond well to grains. So you know, take that with a grain of salt and play around and find what works for you and what works, you know, if you're struggling with like a yeast or parasite issue, this is not the way you would want to eat. <laughs> um, but yeah, they do have quite a bit. They have about a quarter of your diet is from grains. You know, 
if you have like insulin resistance, that's probably not the best way to go, you know, or if you have yeast or parasites, things like that. So just take that with a grain of salt. There, any time that they're working on a diet, they're going to put everybody in the same box. Okay, so just you play with yourself and figure out what you what works best for you. For me, my diet is predominantly meat, vegetables, nuts, and seeds. Works really well for me. But I do like rice occasionally, and I do like, like you know some like lentil pasta or you know things like that. Um, but I typically do eat a lower carb diet because I feel good at all. But that I struggle with insulin resistance. I struggle with yeast. Um, so yeah. All right. Oh, third-party certifications for gluten-free products. I didn't know that you have that. <laughs> I guess it's 10 ppm. <laughs> it has less than 10 parts per million of gluten in it. They can help that, which, you know, for celiacs, is probably a great thing. <laughs> um, wow, they even give you, like, if you need more folate and iron, where you can get that from. It's fascinating. Yeah, this guide is pretty, pretty good. If you're worried about like really looking for into like gluten free, this guide is pretty handy. Here, I'm just, I'm easy. I'm just really easy. I know the foods I can have, right? Cheese doesn't have gluten in it. <laughs> um, meat doesn't have, unless you bread it, and, like, you know, make it. Vegetables don't have gluten in it. You know, so it's just like the easiest way for me. Do you guys have any questions? All right, then I'm gonna turn this bad boy off.